everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breast Cancer Physio. I'm your host, Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSER accredited exercise physiologist. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about a very t- common conversation that I have with all of my breast cancer patients, which is why is skin care so important for prevention of lymphedema? So if you enjoy this content and you would like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the section below if you have any questions around skincare or lymphedema or any other topics around breast cancer that you'd like more information on. So as I mentioned, this is a really important conversation that I have with any of my breast cancer patients that are at risk of lymphedema. So to start off in this video, I want to talk about which patients are at risk of lymphedema. And essentially that includes people that have had lymph nodes removed under their armpit or people that have had radiation applied to their armpit. The technical word for armpit, by the way, is axilla. So if you see that written in any medical notes, that's what they're referring to is your armpit. The other thing we want to talk about in this video, though, is that people who have had their breast or their chest wall radiated, that also means that your lymphatics have been scarred in that area. So there is risk of chest wall or breast lymphedema as a side effect of radiation treatment. So we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. The first thing we need to talk about though, to get your head around the idea of all of the links that I'm going to be detailing here is the fact that Your lymphatic system is part of your immune system. So in the circumstance you've had lymph nodes removed from your underarm or your armpit region, it ultimately means that the immunity on the skin of that arm is forever mildly compromised. So ultimately what that means is that any form of skin breakdown is a possibility for bacteria or bugs to get into your lymphatic system and ultimately trigger lymphedema. So the unfortunate side effect of having lymph nodes removed from an armpit or radiation performed to your armpit is that it causes a lifelong risk of lymphedema. Now, I do want to point out in this video that clinically what I see is that the majority of people who are going to get lymphedema are going to get it during either radiation or just after radiation and secondly during chemotherapy. So if and that's not to say um, it happens during neoadjuvant chemotherapy because that that's usually when people haven't had any lymph nodes removed at all so if you're having neoadjuvant chemotherapy which is usually chemotherapy performed before surgery then you're not necessarily going to be at risk of lymphedema it's only when you've had lymph nodes removed and then you've gone on to chemotherapy or when you've had lymph nodes removed and you've had chemotherapy or you've gone straight on to radiation after chemo or surgery. Keep in mind that even though we're talking about a lifelong risk, what I see clinically is that that risk tends to drop off like quite significantly after active treatment is completed. However, one of the reasons this video is so important guys is because one of the things that can potentially trigger lymphedema down the track is infection, specifically an infection in the arm or the skin of the arm that's had lymph nodes removed. So what we want to talk about in this video is ways that you can maintain the skin barrier to prevent infection. So we'll get onto that in a little bit of time. So the way this is all linked is that if you've had lymph nodes removed from your armpit or you've had your armpit radiated, which puts you at risk of lymphedema and you get a form of skin breakdown on that arm, which allows bugs or bacteria to get into your lymphatic system, that bacteria can potentially become an infection, which can then trigger cellulitis, which is a broad skin infection. And if you haven't heard or seen cellulitis, it can become a very bright pink or red rash that usually has a border to it. It can trigger lymphedema. So there's a lot of dominoes that have to fall before a skin breakdown causes lymphedema. However, I have seen these dominoes fall quite fast in circumstances where it's happened. And I would say I only get a couple of cases, maybe a year that this happens, but the domino effect goes lymph node removal, skin breakdown that gets infected. So local, a local skin infection, 
which then turns into cellulitis, which then triggers them for edema. So a lot of things have got to go wrong, but they can go wrong quickly in that environment. And I think particularly in the environment where someone is immune suppressed. So if we look at skin breakdown, there's a lot of different types of skin breakdown, but essentially it's anything that's causing an opening in the skin or an like an issue where the skin's compromised. So sunburn is an example of that. A burn from a pan in your kitchen is an example of skin breakdown. Um, a, a cat bite, a, a, a fall where you take a little bit of bark off, um, a mosquito or a midgy bite. So we have a lot of mosquitoes and midges in Australia. So um, apologies if people watching this overseas aren't sure what they are, but essentially it's an insect bite. So what we want to look out for if we have any form of skin breakdown is if the breakdown is getting an infection in it locally. So what I mean by this is we want to monitor that skin breakdown for signs of infection, which would include redness, pus, heat or pain or a combination of those things. If those signs are occurring, then the best thing you can do is get to your GP. Now, not that I'm a medical doctor, but in these circumstances, it is typical or usual for your GP to then prescribe prophylactic antibiotics because what the doctor is trying to do in this circumstance is prevent that local skin infection from turning into a bout of cellulitis. I should also mention here that cellulitis is not a good thing to have. Um, one bout of cellulite, cellulitis puts you at more risk of further cellulitis and it can land you in hospital on an IV drip for a week feeling pretty rotten. And of course, one of the reasons we want you not to get cellulitis is because we're trying not to trigger lymphedema. So what's the best thing you can do to prevent cellulitis, to prevent skin breakdown and potentially prevent triggering lymphedema? It's maintaining your skin barrier. And the best and easiest way to maintain your skin barrier is to hydrate from the inside and the outside. So what I mean by that, is if you've got a moisturizer at home, I would highly recommend that you are moisturizing the skin of your arm once a day with a low pH water-based moisturizer that you don't have an allergic reaction to. This one I'm holding up here is Mugu. Mugu is an Australian-based product. Um, these guys are based on the Gold Coast and they are often used as a moisturizer for radiation and uh, I can certainly recommend them because I use this on myself all the time. And so the reason it is uh, really important to moisturize once a day is essentially to enhance that skin barrier. So the other thing to mention though here too is of course to moisturize your breast if you've had a lumpectomy and radiation or your chest wall if you've had a mastectomy and radiation. So make sure that you are moisturizing on a daily basis to help that skin barrier stay in good integrity. The next best thing you can do is to hydrate. So this is moisturizing your skin from the inside out. So make sure you're drinking plenty of water because dehydration is definitely a trigger for lymphedema. The reason being is that if you don't keep yourself hydrated, then you are going to dry your skin and dry skin is at higher risk for skin breakdown and skin breakdown, of course, can lead to potential infection, which then, of course, can trigger cellulitis and or lymphedema. So between those two things, which are pretty simple tasks to do, as long as you're maintaining good hydration by drinking plenty of fluids and moisturizing the skin of your arm and or your breast or chest wall as needed. They are the two most effective, simple things you can do to help prevent lymphedema and care for your skin. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you've gained some really great information as to why skincare is very important for reducing your risk of lymphedema. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll see you next week again for another video. I'm Jen McKenzie, the Breast Cancer Physio, and I'll see you next time.